Nice day, out for a walk. Oh my god, it's so great. Wow! Did you see that? Wow! Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Oh, my. What is going on? Oh my gosh, there it is again! I am not a garbage truck! I, I am, am not, not a garbage, garbage truck! Our next amazing speaker is the author of the best-selling book, The Law of the Garbage Truck. He's returning to CO Live with his new book, The Three Promises, here to share his trademark secret for increasing the joy in your job, the passion in your career, and the power to positively impact other people's lives. Please welcome David Polay. I want to start right off and ask if you would mind, if you wouldn't mind playing a little game of fill in the blank, would you? Sure. Will you do it? Yes. Yeah, will you say I if you'll do it? I? I? All right, so this is what parents typically say about their children in terms of what they want for their children. So I'm going to give you the sentence, and then you fill in the blank with the word, okay? Here it is. I just want my kids to be happy. happy. Isn't that interesting? Happy is the answer. Now, last week, I have to share this with you. I was speaking for a company, and uh, an executive in the front row, and I said, Parents, kids just want to be, I just want my kids to be, and she said, to be quiet. <laughs> I thought that was great, you know. How many of you are parents? You know, we've all been there. But the answer that I was looking for was the one that you provided, which is to be happy. Because that's what we all really think about. I have two little girls, 11 and 12 year old, and I want them to be happy too. But the answer also worries me. And it worries me for three reasons, three statistics. Here's the first one. The depression statistics now show that 10 times greater depression, 10 times greater than it was in the 1960s. Depression today is 10 times greater than it was in the 1960s. The second statistic, only 20% of people in the workforce globally believe that they're doing what they do best every day. Just 20%. And a majority of adults, the third statistic, majority of adults don't believe that they're making a significant difference on a daily basis. That upsets me, and it upsets me because it tells a sad story. A story of more and more people living without joy and working without joy, more and more people not doing what they love at work, and more and more people being resigned to the fact that they don't think they make a difference. So what do we do? What do we do? Well, I'm going to offer a radical idea, and that is stop trying to be happy. Now, don't get me wrong. I think happiness is a great thing. I study it, and I'm part of the International Positive Psychology Association. I helped co-found that organization. But what I mean by that is stop trying to be happy. Now, happiness is a good thing because we know happier people live longer, happier people are healthier, happier people have better relationships, more friends, they make more money, they're promoted more often, they're more resilient when adversity comes. So happiness is a good thing. But here's the big thing that we have to keep in mind. Happiness follows actions. Happiness follows actions. So the question then is, what action should we be in in order to become happier? Well, for me, in all my research, working with people from more than 100 countries around the world, and working with corporations around the world and studying inside positive psychology, I found that there's one simple formula, and it's this. Me, no. <laughs> my, my mom would be very proud of that answer, but no, it's, it's this. Create fulfillment every day times navigate negativity every day equals happiness and success. If you can create fulfillment in your life every day and navigate negativity when things come down your path that aren't what you want, then you can achieve happiness and success. So the question then is, what relates or what connects to fulfillment on a daily basis? What can you do reliably every day? And that's what we call, or I call, the three promises. They're science-based. The first promise, find joy every day. I don't mean that you spend the whole day running around with a big smile, although I think that's a great idea. But I'm saying if you're dealing with the reality of your life and sometimes circumstances are difficult, I'm talking about finding at least a few moments that you can authentically say, I found joy. Do you get that? Yeah. Find joy. Second is do what you love. I'm not saying that you have to have the perfect job or wait for the perfect job. I'm saying that you find and craft in your job 15 minutes of doing something that you love, something that brings out your natural strengths. Does that make sense? 
Thank you, the third promise is make a difference. And I'm saying you don't have to go and be a volunteer all day long, but finding at least one opportunity during the day purposely to give to somebody else in a way that makes a difference to them. Does that make sense? Yes. Those are the three promises. And so I am so proud, and this is for, and I'm saying this now because this is on video, I'm gonna share it with my family, my girls, my wife, my parents, that my book, The Three Promises, is coming out today and it's here, so it's a global release of the three promises. Right here. Thank you. So I want to tell a story from the three promises about the third promise, make a difference. But the first thing I want to do is give away my book. And yours is for you. Thank yeah, you. yeah, you're welcome. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks for sitting in the front row. So let me tell you a little quick story. Uh, my father when I was growing up, was responsible for packing the family car with all our luggage before our family vacation. So what my dad did, we used to call him Big Lou, we call him Big Lou, he's about six foot three. So Big Lou would go into the house and he would grab all the luggage from the house and then he'd bring it out to the back of the car and then he would stage it. And then Big Lou had, it was a real scientific effort here. So he would take one bag and he'd put it in and he'd grab another bag and he'd just keep doing that until he got all the bags in the car, except for one day. My dad couldn't find space in the trunk for one last bag. So he stepped back and he did the typical big man thing. Crossed his arms and he started staring down the trunk. <laughs> now, I looked up at Big Lou and I saw that he was staring. And I looked down at the bags and I saw they weren't moving. <laughs> So I don't know what came over me, but I stepped forward. Man, I looked around in that trunk. I moved this bag a little to the left. Moved this bag to the right. Moved this one back just a little bit. I grabbed that last bag and, boink, the bag slipped right into place. Felt like I just solved the Rubik's Cube. Right here. <laughs> Which I never have done, actually, but for to be, be completely honest. But I felt like I just laid down that final piece of the jigsaw puzzle. So I looked up at Big Lou. Big Lou looked down at me, and he said, David, you're a good packer. <laughs> I was nine years old when my father told me that, and I'm 49 years old, and I'm still talking about it. <laughs> oh, that's very nice. See, what we know from the research, psychologists Martin Seligman and Christopher Peterson, both whom I studied with in graduate school, have found in the research that when you call out the strength in somebody, you amplify it. When you name a strength in somebody else, you bring it to life. And that's what my father did that day. He called out a strength, and he did more than that. He turned it into a story, and he told everybody this story about his son, the Good Packer. But he did more than that. He made sure that I could hear him telling it. Because the best leaders know that their belief in their employees', employees strengths makes a difference in their performance. And the best parents know that their belief in their children's strengths makes a difference in their lives. A couple years ago, the, uh, a movie came out celebrating Curious George. You guys remember Curious George? When I was a kid, it was a very popular, put your hands up if you've, yeah, okay, Curious George, popular popular cartoon when I was a kid, and a new movie came out a few years ago. So I wanted to buy Curious George dolls for my daughters. So I went to the Toys R, Us, uh, Toys R Us in Florida to buy these big dolls. And I got out of my car, and I was starting to walk up the aisle between the cars, and I saw a little boy, his mother and his grandmother, trying to put a bicycle into the family car. And they were struggling. <laughs> well, <laughs> I stopped and offered to help. Why? Because I'm a good packer. That's right. So I went over there and I was, you know, I know what I'm doing. So I'm kind of telling the boy which way to go. And we're going back and forth. And he's following my directions. And all of a sudden I hear the mother trying to call the boy's father to say that they might not be able to get that bike in the car. Well, I wave her off. I need more time. Why? Because I'm a good packer. So I'm sitting there with this boy trying maybe for a couple more minutes trying every which way that I can come up with. And I finally step back and I look at that thing and I say, we might not be able to get that bike in the car. 
I might have finally met my match. <laughs> so I did what my dad did. I crossed my arms. <laughs> I looked at that trunk, and I said to the mother, you might need to buy a bigger car. <laughs> well, the little boy must have seen my face because he said, wait. So I waited. Little boy, much more nimble than I was, leaned into that car, and he leaned really far in. He grabbed that front tire and moved it just a little bit. And he said to me, push. <laughs> and uh, I pushed. Boom. And the bike slipped right into place. I looked over at that little boy, and he <laughs> lit up with pride. <laughs> I walked over to him. I put my hand on his shoulder, and I said, you're a good packer. <laughs> oh, thank you. See, when we call out the strengths in another person, we give them a gift of a lifetime. We make a difference. You don't have to go to a mountaintop. You don't have to give up your job to make a difference on a daily basis, and that's what the three promises are all about. They can be quick. My father had one moment in time. He caught it and it's lasted my lifetime so far. And now I tell that story to my father as he is now aging, and I get to tell him what impact he had on me as a son. So here's what I want to do now, is I want to talk about the three promises that's the first part of the formula, which is to create fulfillment. But let's get back to navigating negativity. Because people will say, I'm doing all the right things, but what happens when I run into negative people and negative events? I mean, I did, all the, I did gratitude, I, I, I meditated, I did everything, but now I run into negative people and negative events, what do I do? Well, there's a story I want to share with you that's been read, that I wrote, that's been read by nearly 100 million people, that's the estimate. It comes from a book I wrote called The Law of the Garbage Truck, and it goes like this. How many of you have been to New York City? How many of you have been in a taxi cab in New York City? How many of you have ever heard of New York City? <laughs> I want to include you all, I just want to make sure we got everybody. Well, I was in a hurry to catch a train from Grand Central Station, so I waved down a taxi, and I hopped in, and we took off for Grand Central. We were driving the right-hand lane, when all of a sudden a black car jumps out of a parking space right in front of us, the taxi driver has to slam on his brakes, the car skids, the tires squeal, and at the very last moment, our car stops just one inch from the other car's back end. I couldn't believe it. But then I couldn't believe what happened next. The driver of the other car, the guy who almost caused a major accident, he whips his head around and starts yelling bad words at us. Ask me how I know? Some words in New York come with a very special face. <laughs> Something like this. <laughs> and then he makes a, a gesture with his hand that I think they're saying something like, we're number one. <laughs> something, something like that. Half the peace sign. Yeah half the peace sign. And so then, and then, uh, that's a good one. I'll have to keep that in mind. And then I really am blown away by what happens next. My taxi driver just smiles and waves at the guy. I mean, he pulls his car around, rolls down the window, just waves and says, have a good day. And he wasn't taunting him. He just was wishing him well and, and took off. Now I'm in the back seat with a different opinion. And I say, why'd you just do that? This guy could have killed us, could have sent us to the hospital, and you're off being all friendly and everything. This is when my taxi driver told me something that years later I wrote about, and I named the law of the garbage truck. And it goes like this. Many people can be like garbage trucks. They can run around full of frustration, full of anger, and full of disappointment. And as their garbage piles up, they do what garbage trucks do. They look for a place to dump it. And if you let them, they'll dump it on you. you. So when someone wants to dump on you, don't take it personally. Just smile, wave, wish them well, and wish them well, no taunting. Wish them well and move on. Now, after, at that moment in the taxi, I'm sitting in the back seat, and I'm thinking, how often do I let garbage trucks run right over me and dump their garbage? And then how often do I take their garbage and spread it to other people? At home, at work, on the street? And it was then that I said, I don't want their garbage and I'm not going to spread it anymore. So like in the movie The Sixth Sense, how many people have seen the movie The Sixth Sense? 
where the little boy says, I see dead people. Well, now I see garbage trucks. <laughs> see them coming to dump their load? I don't, but like my taxi driver, I don't take it personally. I just smile, I wave, I wish them well, and I move on. This is the key, because we get to choose our response in life, and it doesn't have to involve garbage. Can I get an amen on that? Amen. Amen. It doesn't have to involve garbage. So there is something called the promise cycle, and that is, rather than getting caught up in the garbage cycle, which the garbage cycle is rumors, gossip, frustration, anger, disappointment, excessive worry, excessive criticism, and you're constantly bringing people into it, and you get sucked into it, and it's hard to get anything done productively, stay in the promise cycle. Find joy, do what you love, make a difference, and let it feed positively over one over the other, and bring that to other people. Will you do that? Yes. So what we're going to do right now, and this is we're going to conclude, it, conclude my time with you, we're going to, I'm going to ask you to take a pledge. A pledge that people from more than 100 countries have already taken in 48 languages. It's a pledge not to be a garbage truck and a pledge to live the three promises every day. Are you ready? Yes. I need everybody up. Everybody up. Everybody up. Everybody up. Everybody up. I want you to watch very quickly a video of people taking the pledge from all around the world. I do not accept garbage in my life. I do not accept garbage in my life. Saya tidak menerima sampah sarap dalam hidup saya. I do not accept garbage in my life. When I see garbage trucks. When I see garbage trucks. When I see garbage trucks. All they found is vaccine. I do not take them personally. I do not take them personally. I just smile. 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 I am not a garbage truck. 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 I do not accept garbage in my life. 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 Go. Here we go. Oh, all right. Go ahead. Yeah, thank you. All right, here we go. I need your hands. Just like in the video, I need you to get your face, your hands, your body into this. We've got to feel it. This is a spiritual experience. Are you ready? Yes. Let's do it. This is the last thing we do together. I want you to repeat after me. I do not accept garbage in my life. I do not accept garbage in my life. When I see garbage trucks, when I, see garbage trucks I, do I do not take them personally. I just smile. I, just smile. I, wave. I wave. I wish them well. And I move on. And I move on. And I do not spread garbage to others. I am not a garbage truck. I am not a garbage truck. I do not accept garbage in my life. I do not accept garbage in my life. I will find joy every day. I will find joy every day. I will do what I love. I will do what I love. And I will make a difference. And I thank you so much. God bless. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much.